Hey guys, the cube dude here with my colorblind video. So in the background of the video, I just want to point out that this is the mirror challenge. So what you do is you just look in the mirror at the cube. You cannot actually look at the cube in front of you. You have to look at it through the mirror. So everything is backwards and it gets kind of confusing. I do pretty good. I get about 2 minute 11 seconds on the first one and 2 minute 21 seconds on the second solve. And so I challenge all of you to try this out yourself because it's actually pretty fun. It's pretty difficult at first. I've done it before, but it was like a year ago, so I didn't practice it all before these two solves. So the scrambles are in the description if you want to follow, if you want to try and solve exactly what I was solving. And so what I did about the colorblind video was I asked my mom to record some audio of her talking about how she figured out I was colorblind when I was a lot younger. Because I'm actually kind of fascinated in how she knew I was colorblind. So here is a little like one and a half minute audio clip of her talking about that and how it affected me throughout my elementary school years. And after that I'll talk about how it affects me in cubing. So, without further ado, let's get started. When you were doing therapy for your verbal apraxia, oftentimes you would use colors to work on your sounds. And I started to notice that although I knew you knew your colors, you were making multiple errors and just making mistakes with naming the colors, and especially with reds and oranges and greens and things like that. So then when I took you to the, your next pediatrician appointment, I asked them to do the colorblind test on you. And you were very clearly colorblind. And then I had an eye doctor do the same colorblind test on you, and he said you were severely colorblind. And it just really only affects you with art and seeing shadings, I think and different changing colors and um, in elementary school it just presented challenges when things were sort of color coordinated or color coded as to you should do you know color everything red or what's colored in red and then you wouldn't be able to see what was colored in red so we always notified your teacher so that they knew that you were colorblind and if there's anything having to deal with colors in your work then they would adjust it so that you could complete it successfully. So there you have it. That is how my mom figured out that I was colorblind. So now how it affects me in cubing. I'll just be pretty much going over the coloring and like the sticker shades that I get mixed up with. So actually when I started solving Rubik's Cube, people, like every time somebody knows I can solve a Rubik's Cube, they think it's amazing. But then once they figure out I'm colorblind, they always ask me how I could do it. And so what I always respond with is that just the shading of the stickers is what matters. So right here in front of me I have my black Diane Panchi and it has the half bright sticker set. And on the half bright sticker set there is a really light green and then the fluorescent orange and fluorescent yellow. And what gets me, on most cubes the green and the orange always look the same to me. Unless the orange is a lot darker or the green is a lot darker and there's a light orange. I need one of them to be a light and the other one needs to be a dark. You can't just have them as normal colors because then I'll, I will get them confused. And I have pictures of me solving a V cube 6 and I thought it was solved, that everything is solved except for one little centerpiece that I thought, on the orange side I thought it was green, and on the green side I thought it was orange. And then I noticed that it wasn't. Because I looked at it again about the, like, the next day after solving it. And I was like, wait, that looks kind of wrong. So, the sticker shades is really what matters. I, I've experimented with pink instead of orange, because I don't really like the orange anyways. And so I will be trying out a new color scheme. I just ordered stickers from Cubesmith. And I ordered it for my 54.6 millimeter feng shi because the green looks pretty dark on that and it kind of looks the same as the orange for me, as well as maybe even the red. And so I ordered light blue, I ordered fluorescent yellow and a light green. That way the yellow pops out more so it doesn't look like the green. Then I ordered a regular orange so the light green won't look like the regular orange. Because if it was fluorescent then it'd, it would look a little bit more like the green to me. And so it, hasn't, it doesn't really affect me that much. Oh, and also re a red, white, and that's about it. So, the sticker shades are really what matters. I might even start experimenting with purple. I have purple stickers, but I have not stickered any puzzles. And oftentimes, as I mentioned before, I'll get some pieces mixed up. And I sometimes even have to ask my mom, like, is this green or is this orange? And sometimes I even ask my friends that, and they just think, oh, wait, you, you don't know what color that is, seriously? And also, the question I get most when I tell people that I'm colorblind is, Immediately they just say like what color is this and they start they point at like a shirt and if it's a blue shirt I'll know it's blue because I've never really seen anybody wearing a purple shirt So I assume it's blue and then the first thing they say is you're not colorblind and 
I'm not sure about all, all you other colorblind people out there, but that gets really annoying to me because I am colorblind and I will completely fail a colorblind test if you give it to me. So don't ever tell a colorblind person they are not colorblind. It just gets really annoying. And so that's pretty much all I have to say. If you have any more questions, I might have forgotten some stuff, but if, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and I will answer them within a day. I usually answer maybe like an hour or two after the comment because I check my email hourly or maybe even like every half an hour. I check my email a lot. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below with some topic suggestions also for future videos. If you haven't already, check out the channel of the week, Cubing Master number 8. That's number without the B. Hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks for watching.